السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هدي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you back to our lessons from the trials and tribulations and tonight is the night of the Thursday, Friday night, 25th of Rabiul Thani or Rabiul Akhir 1445 years after the migration or the Hijrah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with November 9, 2023 and today we are going to talk about the topic which is of many of the brothers and sisters are asking us around what about boycotting the products of the transgressors what about boycotting the products of the transgressors many times during a political unrest or turmoil or certain uh, attack towards a certain ethnic group we receive muslims we receive a lot of list a list of products a lot of products to be boycotted for example if somebody let's say said something about Islam or mocked about the Prophet Sallallahu and that person or that whatever entity belongs to a certain regime they will make a big list of things boycott the products of this 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 regime or this this these things which support such and such this boycotting list when it reaches the Muslims of course we are all Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin we feel the gira or the honor of our, uh, of our religion, if somebody makes fun of the Prophet Sallallahu if somebody makes fun of uh, the religion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or any Prophet and Messengers, we are the first people we feel sad and angry about it and we, we are emotional about it. All of these are natural uh, human elements that we can never get rid of. However, we need to gear or channel these anger and these emotions in the right direction. First of all, going out and screaming and shouting and burning the flags and you know breaking the cars or burning tires, all of these are not acceptable or not the way to show uh, 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 support for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Muslim brothers and sisters they ask this question that we receive this list and then we feel bad. My house is full, my pantry is full of these products. We, are, we love these products. We eat them. We have been eating them. Now we receive this list. Some of the lists they claim these are Muslims should not uh, 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 buy these products. And some of them even clearly say it is haram for a Muslim who believes in Allah in the last day to consume such and such products. Depends on who is sending these type of information. Depending on the level of their uh, emotion, they would maybe go from makru to haram. But at the end of the day, the question comes as this. For example, if I consume these products, am I a sinner? Am I participating in the sin? What that regime is doing towards, you know, whoever. If I deal with these products, am I being part of the transgression? If I don't boycott, does it mean my iman or my faith is weak? As, and, and question. These are the questions that is usually asked. What should we do? Just recently we have been hearing this one of the things that we received today is uh, they're saying on such and such a day you should boycott everything boycott uh, buying gas boycott going to the store boycott buying and selling except what is necessary go to work and come back home and these are the kind of things are being you know uh, propagated amongst the Muslims and they're all uh, you know concerned about this if I don't participate in it am I a sinner and etc etc first of all as Muslims we must always enlighten our heart with the teaching of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet let's ask this question the Prophet and the Sahaba they were not sitting and lying in the bed of roses from the day one they have faced a lot of criticism from the disbelievers be it from the Jews or the Christians or the mushrikun, the pagans, be it from the regimes like the Roman Empire and people from outside, they were all against the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the right reason, 
knowingly, for sorry, for the wrong reason, and of course, knowingly sometimes, unknowingly sometimes, but they were against it. They used to insult them, abuse them, and they even threatened to kill them, and in some cases they killed them. Many of the companions got killed, injured. They, were, they ridiculed the Prophet ﷺ, they mocked at him, they used to call him that your shaitan has stopped visiting you when the revelation would stop. This hadith is in Bukhari. And they used to call him, you are a soothsayer, you are a poet, you are a liar, etc., etc. So many things have been dumped on the Prophet ﷺ. And the Jews plotted against, the Jews, not all of the Jews, but many of the Jews, they plotted against the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, and so did the pagans of the Quraysh. And they were constantly trying to extinguish, extinguish the light of Islam. Constantly. They were trying to do that. But during this period of 23 years, the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba never boycotted dealing with the Jews and the Christians, Christians or the pagans when it comes to business dealing. Things which Allah has made halal, they didn't go there. They even did that while they were having all of this transgression being done against them. And this is the Qudwa. As this is the Uswatun Hasana. Laqad kana lakum fi Rasulillahi Uswatun Hasana. Okay? This is something that nobody should question, nobody should point fingers at. If somebody comes and tells you why you don't boycott or agree with this list, you give them what the Prophet and the Sahaba did. If they question this, then somebody who is questioning, inshallah they will not, I hope, then their faith and their intention is questioned. We understand the emotion is high completely. We respect the emotion. Of course it has to be high. Their people are being killed, their people are being tortured, their people, their basic rights have been, uh, you know, uh, denied. Of course there will be emotion. Everybody, more or less, is, doesn't like this. But, and that emotion is respected. But if somebody comes and makes something haram or makruh for us and we have something from the Prophet ﷺ that shows what they're doing is not correct or it's not the right way to do it, then we present to them the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is what, inshallah, we're going to discuss and this is the... Because all of this we, I just mentioned is what I said. It doesn't matter. But right now, inshallah, the revelation. These are the things, inshallah, will be in the, drop, the, the comment box, inshallah. The drop box, I'll put all of the description of the hadith, inshallah. You can... You can follow up with those narrations, inshallah. First of all, we see in the Sayyid al Bukhari, Kitab al Buyu, the chapter of the uh, transaction, buying and selling. Narrated Ibn Abbas, anhu, the Uqad, the Mijanna, and Dhul Majaz were marketplaces in the pre Islamic period of ignorance. When Islam came, Muslims felt that marketing there might be a sin. Dealing with the kuffar, the pagans, Jews and Christians will be a sin. So the divine revelation came. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, Laisa alaykum junahun an tabtagu fadlam mir rabbikum. It is not harm for it is not a harm for you to seek the bounty of your Lord. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described dealing with the mushrikun. And these mushrikun were not friendly to the friendly to them. They were very unfriendly to them. Okay? Allah taught the believers that dealing with them as long as the product is halal and the medium of the product is halal this is you are seeking the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when you see a Muslim dealing with a Jew or a Christian or deal with these products don't question his faith what he is doing is he is seeking the barakah the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't say those products are question mark that's question mark in your mind you don't like to deal with this product, don't deal with it. But don't make it a list or, and impose it upon Muslims and, uh, you know, force them to consider something to be disliked or consider something to be haram. Yes, if somebody says, I don't like this product to buy, it's my personal choice, then this is your personal choice. You can do whatever you want. You don't want to buy banana of this brand, you want to buy banana of that brand. This is your personal choice. But when we make these brands a list and when you say don't do this and do that, that becomes a problem because those brands that we are trying to ban, those are products which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal inshallah ta'ala. Then Imam Bukhari in the Kitab al-Buyu, uh, he has a chapter and this chapter is very explicit. He said, Bab, ashira wal bay'i ma'al mushrikina wa ahlil harb. Buying and selling from the 
disbelievers, mushrikeen, the pagans, and the people who you are engaged in war, i.e. while you are warring with them, huh, you can do business with them. Okay, you don't want to do business with them, that's something different, but you can. Personally, I don't like to buy this brand, okay, let's say, Coke. I don't want to buy this, buy this brand. Okay, person, that's fine. But when I make it a public thing and a stunt and people, you know, you have to do this, that's a problem. Because Allah has made this halal. Narrated by Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, We were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a tall pagan with long matted unkempt, unkempt hair, ke, hair meaning like hair, came during his, d driving his sheep. So he was a shepherd and he was driving his sheep. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, are those sheep for sale or for gifts? The pagan replied, they are for sale. So the Prophet ﷺ bought one sheep from this pagan. And this Imam Bukhari brought in the chapter of dealing, meaning like selling and buying from the mushrikun. Imam Bukhari has the longer version of this hadith in other chapter and also Imam Muslim in Kitab al-Ashriba, which shows that this sahaba, they were with the Prophet ﷺ and their number was 130 people. They were in expedition while the Prophet ﷺ uh, bought this from this uh, pagan um, uh, shepherd. And that's why the next chapter in the same book, Kitab al Buyu, Imam Bukhari has a chapter, chapter title, Bab, Shira il Mamluki min al Harbi, buying a slave from a warring person who is an enemy and is he's fighting against you, you buy from him, wa hibatihi wa itqihi, and giving this slave that you bought from him as a gift, or you free him or her for the sake of Allah. And under this chapter, he brings several three hadith. I believe, if I am not correct, wrong right now, uh, the one of the hadith he brings is the hadith of Ibn Abbas talking about the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam that he took the gift of that evil king. Okay, when he wanted to harm Sarah, because he was fighting the deen. He was uh, fight, fight, harm Sarah, but he couldn't. Finally, he let her go and he sent Hajar or Ajar, the narration says. And he said, take this shaitan away and give this slave girl as a gift. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sarah, they accepted the gift, gift from this harbi. And this is what Imam Bukhari brings under this chapter. And this shows the great fiqh of Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari rahimahullahu ta'ala. In the chapter of Kitab al-Buyu, the same book, what is said about the goldsmith? And this is the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And this is after the uh, battle of Badr that the Prophet gave him certain things from the hummus. And he said that he made a deal with one of the goldsmith from Banu Qaynuqa. And Banu Qaynuqa is basically a Jewish tribe. There was a uh, goldsmith man. He said, I made a deal with him that I will go and get idhir for him. Idhir is a type of grass that the, the goldsmith and the copper smith and the iron smith they used to use. So he said, I, I made a deal and he accompanied me to get the grass or that idhir and then I would sell it to him and I will use this money to pay for my walima. And this is how they sought the baraka or the blessings for, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by dealing with this people who were not for al-Islam, okay, and as you, in, in cases, in many cases you can say they were fighting Islam, but they were absolutely fine with it, and they did not make it an issue of don't go this and don't do that, because it makes the life of the Muslims difficult. Uh, the next hadith is a very beautiful hadith, uh, in Kitab al-Maghazi, the, 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 the book of the fights or the you know the battles for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He said that from he heard it from Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad was an intimate friend of Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And Umayyah ibn Khalaf is one of the head of the enemy of Islam. Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad is from Medina and he was a very intimate friend of Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And he said, whenever Umayyah went to Medina or passed by Medina, Umayyah would stay with Sa'ad. And whenever Sa'ad used to go to Makkah or pass by Makkah, he would stay in the house of 
Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Okay? Then he says, when Allah's messenger arrived at Al-Madina. So this is after the pagans of Makkah, they did what they did to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba and kicked them out from the town. Kicked them out from the town. Okay? This deen was more precious for them. They were not fighting for land or for water or for this or for that. The most important thing for them was the deen. So when they came to al Madina, um, Sa'ad went to perform Umrah and stayed at Umayyah's home in Makkah. So Sa'ad was a Sahabi and the Prophet Sallallahu and the other companions of the Muhajirun, they just had so much from the pagans. But did he deal with the halal things? Did he stop dealing with or Was there any embargo upon him from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So don't deal with the pagans of the Makkah because they are so evil, they have looted us, they took our things unjustly, they would not let us practice our Islam. And the emotions were high for them too. They were human like us. But they controlled their emotion. Whatever Allah allowed them, they, per they did it. But look, their Islam was always intact. Okay, So he went and stayed in the house of Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And he said to Umayyah that when the Kaaba is empty, then take me to do the tawaf there. So he went to do the tawaf and he saw Abu Jahl. And the story, the hadith is long by the way. But the hadith shows that Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, although he had that friendship with Umayyah ibn Khalaf, but that did not mean that he compromised with the deen. When it came to the deen, he spoke against the, the people and he spoke against Abu Jahl as the hadith, long hadith says. But I don't want to go there because our point is to understand that is our dealing with the Jews and the Christians and the pagans, even when they are transgressing against the Muslims or a certain land, okay, or this or that, is this okay? Absolutely okay. People ask this question, I live in this country, my tax money goes there. As long as you live in this country, the business that you do, the work that you do, it is halal, and the money that you get is halal, you are fine. You are seeking the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, but now the question comes, is it better for me to move to a Muslim land? That's a completely different issue. Yes, if you think and you compare, it's better for you. In many cases, it is better for you. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, then move. But if somebody wants to stay here and do the halal business and the halal living and, the, and his deen is protected, then nobody can question and say that what he's doing is makruh or what he's doing is haram and so on and so forth. And this is what we learn from these narrations. Uh, the next hadith is uh, in the, in the Sayyid al-Bukhari, Kitab al-Manaqib al-Ansar, the chapter of the merits of al-Ansar. Imam Bukhari has a special chapter, Kitab Manaqib al-Ansar. The, the, the merits of the Ansar and this chapter, this book is just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful because he brings their examples to show how Islam can benefit even from the people who are not Muslims. Like in Kitab al-Ansar, he has the hadith of Abu Talib. Why Abu Talib? Abu Talib was a kafir. He died as a kafir. Why he brought in the merits of Al-Ansar to show that anybody who supports Islam the right way, he is Ansar. Technically. Technically means linguistically. But Islamically, the, the, the word the Ansar that Allah has bestowed upon him is only reserved for the inhabitants, the Muslim, the inhabitants, the believers of Medina in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu those who supported the Prophet and the Sahaba. And that is the fiqh of Imam Al-Bukhari, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, in his Sahih. In, the, in this Kitab Al-Manaqib Al-Ansar, narrated Sa'ad's father, when the immigrants reached Medina, Allah's Messenger, he established the bond of brotherhood between several uh, Sahaba, Muhajir and Ansar. And the brotherhood that was the Prophet Sallallahu connected with Abdurrahman ibn Awf with Sa'ad ibn Rabia. So Sa'ad ibn Rabia, he said to Abdurrahman ibn Awf that this is my property, this is my things, I want to divide it amongst you and me, because you're my brother in Islam. But Abdurrahman ibn Awf, look at the huge amount of wealth, and Sa'ad ibn Rabi was one of the rich person in Medina. But the Sahaba al kiram they were not greedy. He said, may Allah bless you, but show me the market. Which market did he point him to? This is the shahid here. He pointed him to go to Banu al-Qaynuqa, the market of Banu Qaynuqa, and Banu Qaynuqa is the market of the crooked Jews. 
who used to deal with riba, who were fighting the Prophet Sallam, as you know. Huh? And they, many of them, they knew that this is the Messenger of Allah, but they belied. They lied against and they said, you are not the Messenger of Allah. In fact, many of the Jews of Medina, they moved in Medina because they knew that the Prophet from their book, the book, our book, their book meaning the original book, which is also our book, the Torah and the Injil. They knew from them the description of the land that this is Medina. And this is the reason they moved to Medina. But when the Prophet Sassim came, they rejected him. These are the crooks. Did Allah Ta'ala say, don't deal with them? Did the Sahaba say, you are, you are, I'm a believer, you are telling me to go there, Abu Dhubillah. No. He went there and he dealt with them and he dealt with cheese, dried cheese and butter. And he became, he made money. Huh? Because he sought the bounty of that Allah put there. Huh? Although some people might question it, but this is where the bounty is. As long as you deal with that. So if I don't go to the Jewish market and say, oh, I'm among the Jews, I can do riba, I can sell, buy with riba. No, 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 no. The commodity and the, the means of the transaction has to be completely halal. Completely halal. If the Jew takes loan from me, I cannot charge riba. If I take loan from a Jew, allowed. But if he says, I'm going to charge you riba, then I cannot take loan from him. Haram, forbidden. So Sahaba al kiram they, they had that kind of Islamic dealing with them. And because of this, Allah blessed them. And then he got married and the hadith is very beautiful, alhamdulillah. And the last hadith that we're going to describe, inshallah, is the hadith in Kitab al-Jihad was Sayr, the book of uh, the fights or the battles and the expeditions that were fought in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu in the chapter, what is said about the dira in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the arm coat or the, you know, the warrior's dress of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wal qamisi fil harbi, and his dress during the battle, how he used to dress. And this is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, an amazing hadith. She said, Qala, tuffiya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa dira'uhu marhoonatun inda Yahudi bi thalathina sa'an min sha'ir. The Prophet ﷺ died and his dira, his arm coat was in Rahan, in mortgage to a Yahudi man for 30 sa. 30 sa is basically 120 mud. This is mud. 120 mud of barley that the Prophet ﷺ took from him as a loan and he gave his arm coat as a Rahan to this Jew, which means the Prophet died وسلم, and he died with a situation where he took a loan from a Jew and the Jews and the people they are known to be not uh, for Al-Islam in the time of the Prophet وسلم. it was known but yet the Prophet وسلم, never you see abundant dealing with them because there is barakah there because which is halal for us there is barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that when people send these lists, first of all, this list doesn't make these products haram under any way, shape or form. It's allowed for a Muslim. As long as the commodity and the, the means of transaction is halal, it's halal for a Muslim to buy, to sell, to take loan and to give loan with a Christian, with a Jew, with a pagan, with any religion, kuffar, whether they are living peacefully with the Muslims or they are transgressing against the Muslims or they are warring against the Muslims. Before the war, during the war, after the war. Before the transgression, during the transgression, after the transgression, all the time. All these are halal and this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please do not consider this list to be affecting your faith or your iman. No, you are fine. You are absolutely fine in dealing with any of these products unless you personally say i don't like this i don't want to buy it okay, don't buy it nobody is there to force you inshallah also we have to understand that this list is making something halal which allah made it halal putting question mark on it for many people and it makes people's life difficult it makes people's life difficult i remember sheikh salem at tawil this is about 15 years ago when he came to masjid ibrahim in austin Sheikh Salim al-Tawil, one of the great uh, person of knowledge from Kuwait, our Sheikh. When this topic of all of these things came, 
Because, you know, this is always happening. There's a fight, there's something. It's a boycott, boycott, boycott. He was saying that one lady called her, him and said, O oh, Sheikh, my son has to drink a certain brand of milk. And this brand is Danish product. And they told me that it is haram for us to consume this milk. Huh? Because, you know, that person from that land, he drew a caricature about the Prophet ﷺ, which is, of course, bad, dangerous for him. Okay, and all Muslims should react to this, but in a nice way. Not like sending him death threats and all of the things that the people who don't have brains, they do that. But those who have brains, they're going to advise him, warn him against Allah's punishment. And that is fine. But to do other things, not allowed. So then they came up with the Danish product list. And they said, boycott, boycott, boycott. Making the, the sister said, I had to give this to my son and wallah, sheikh. I don't mean any harm. My faith is strong. And she kept on begging to the sheikh to say that what I should do. The sheikh said, this is absolutely fine. Why are you saying sorry for something which Allah has made it halal? Can we be better than the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahabat al-Kiram? <coughs> Whichever level we live in, can we or have we witnessed what the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu witnessed? Never. And they dealt with them. Huh? They didn't sell their religion. Okay, They dealt with them, so we deal with them. And if any Muslim deals with them, why are we making it difficult for them? Not correct, inshallah. Um, finally, my brothers and sisters, if we really want to boycott something, we have to boycott disobedience. We have to boycott shirk. How many Muslim countries, they're full of mazars. Uh, how many Muslims, they go and visit certain countries and visit the mazar, the graves, and they pray in that masjid, which is not allowed to pray in a masjid, which is built upon a grave. How many Muslims do that? If you need to boycott something, boycott bida. Innovations, our prayer, our aqidah, our 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 zakat, our every matters. There is thousands and thousands of innovations and cultural practice that that marred the real practice or the sunnah of the Prophet Let's boycott those. And one of the greatest things that we should boycott is the riba. Huh? People, their car is on riba, their house is on riba. Their business is on riba. Their education is on riba. They deal with credit cards. They go to the bank and they buy things with the bank loan as if they're buying a piece of cake. They're dealing at this buying or dealing with the riba is the greatest Jewish product that you should boycott. Riba, the Jews are the king of riba. If you really want to boycott the Jewish products, huh? these things which Allah made it halal, don't focus there. Focus on something which will change the situation of the Muslim Ummah, the riba. Boycott disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the public. Do not take the women out for protest and they are not covered properly. Allah is going to ask you about it. The Prophet would not allow them to come out of their home on the day of the Eid without covering. How can you take them out? To show your support for something to somebody and she is not covered and she's doing something Islamic and she's not obeying Allah, how will you be able to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this kind of methodology? Let's boycott these things. Every one of us can make a list, a better list than Coke, Sprite, Starbucks, all these things, and we can make a list. Shirk, Bida. Riba, 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 and other things. Let's make that list, which is going to change our life and going to bring the ummah back to the good solution. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tabu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.